Today, dear friends, we celebrate the Mass of the 26th Sunday in the Ordinary Time and the feast day of our holy patroness, Saint Teresa. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear friends in Christ, as we come before the Lord today, we give him praise and thanks as we honor our patron saint, Saint Teresa Little Flower, who gave glory to God in her little way of holiness. With that in mind, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you call us all to serve your Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you call us to be holy people. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you lead us to the joy of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. <clears throat> we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only be God in Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say the Lord's way is not faith. Hear now, O house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity that he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our response to God's word, remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, brothers and sisters. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus. Although he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. But his son said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to his other son and gave the same order. And he said in reply, yes, sir but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends in Christ. St. Paul tells us today in the reading about the humble Jesus Christ. Think for a moment, the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, humbled himself, as St. Paul writes, emptying himself to take upon himself our human nature, to be born like all of us, as a defenseless little baby, there is humility. But even more, St. Paul says, the Lord Jesus humbled himself even to the point of dying for us on the cross. What great humility. All we have to do is look at the crucifix, and there is Christ loving us even to death on the cross. All we have to do to understand the lesson of humility is to look at the crucifix and see the humble Lord Jesus
crucified for us. And if the Son of God was humble, so must we be. Not a false humility, putting ourselves down, denying the gifts that the Lord has given to us. That is not humility. Real humility, Christ's humility, means that we put God first in our lives, not ourselves. We strive to do His will, not our own will. We try to please Him, not to please ourselves. And dear friends, if we want to understand what real humility is, then we do no better than to turn to our holy patroness, Saint Teresa, and she will help us to understand how to be God's humble people, always striving to do His will. Dear friends, it is especially good for us to think of Saint Teresa today as we celebrate her feast day. You all know about her, but this is a good time to refresh our minds on who Saint Teresa was, not the church, but the person. This young French cloistered nun who lived only to the age of 24 but whom the Pope called the greatest saint of modern times. She was virtually unknown throughout her life, except for her family and the religious sisters in her country. And yet, after her death, in 1897, she became known and loved throughout the world. And why? because of her writings, her beautiful writings, in effect, her spiritual autobiography, later on published as the book, A Story of the Soul. These were her reflections, which she was told to write down by her religious superior, but were published only after her death. And in those beautiful reflections, St. Teresa gives us a most important message. And it is this, our main job here on earth is to become saints, or better still, to cooperate with God's grace as He makes us saints, which He wants us all to be. The main job that we have here on this earth, whether we are children or adults, whatever our age, is to be God's humble people who we'll always put ourselves in His loving hands, seeking to do His will, not our own. St. Teresa explained how to do that, how to be humble, and how to let God make us saints. Her greatest contribution to the Church, for which Pope St. John Paul II declared her a doctor of the Church, a title given to only a few of the saintly teachers whose teachings have affected the whole Church. And her greatest contribution is what she called her little way of holiness. We have probably heard about it many times. Her little way. But her feast day today is a great opportunity for us to learn it again. Very simply, her little way means finding God in the daily things of our lives, at home, at our place of work, school, in our relationships with people, in the course of the things that we do every day. There is nothing extraordinary here. Sometimes we think <clears throat> that the saints are just people who did extraordinary things, and St. Teresa says that that is not so. 
Saints are not people who do extraordinary things, or at least they don't have to be. A little way means seeing God and loving God in the ordinary experiences of our life. That is real humility. Seeing God, not just seeing ourselves. Of course, St. Teresa saw God in prayer. But she also saw God in the work that she was doing in her convent. Always remember to offer what she did to the Lord who loved her. She saw the importance of making even the simplest actions that she did, lovingly done, presented as a gift to God. One of the beautiful things <clears throat> about St. Teresa is that we have actual photographs of her, some of which are found near our shrine to St. Teresa here in church. One of the pictures shows her washing clothes along with the other sisters. Now that does not seem to have anything to do with becoming a saint, but for St. Teresa it did. Or seemed just like another daily chore was for her a humble gift to God. And that is what she calls us all to do. We think of the things that we have to do, the ordinary things of every day, whether that is in business, in school, taking care of the family, even doing things that seem very monotonous, far from being just unimportant things. These things can be part of our way to heaven. Every day is a gift from God a gift that we can lovingly and humbly give back to him. Offering to God everything we do, even the simplest things, can help us on our way to becoming a saint. St. Teresa lived for only 24 years on this earth, and yet her life and her words have touched and helped millions of people. We celebrate her especially on her feast. Remember, she is our saint. She is your saint, your special helper in heaven. Like her, may we follow the little way, St. Teresa's way, Jesus's way, the way of living every day as the humble servants of Almighty God. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten not made, concept stands with the Father, through him, all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I pray to the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, standing in God's holy presence, we present our needs before him, saying after each of them, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Timothy Cardinal Dole, and all the leaders of the church, that they will help us to grow in the path of holiness and truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we celebrate the feast of our holy patroness, St. Teresa, today, we pray that we will follow her little way of offering to God everything we do each day in order to become his saints. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that during this time of the Eucharistic renewal, we will grow in our love and appreciation of the Holy Eucharist, our Lord's greatest gift to us, his people. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, for the blessing of peace, particularly in the troubled land of Ukraine, and peace in our own city and country and in our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our American servicemen and women serving throughout the world, particularly members of our parish, that they will be protected in safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, EMTs, and healthcare professionals, police officers, and firefighters, that the Lord will bless them in their service of us all, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and suffering, and for our beloved dead, especially for the departed members of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Let us offer our own prayer in silence. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people. Guide and protect us in our journey of life. And one day bring us safely home to your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. For the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to shape in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, 
that this our offering may find acceptance with you, that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just a duty in our salvation, always and every way to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He has made us children of the light, rising to new and everlasting life. He has opened the gates of heaven to receive us as faithful people. His death is our ransom from death, and his resurrection is our rising to life. And so we join with all the angels and the saints to praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus now comes to this soul to change bread and wine into his body and blood. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember us of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
for the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's commandment, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Before we come to the final prayer and the blessing of the Mass, we give thanks to God that we have joined in honoring St. Teresa today. May we always turn to her because she said that she will spend her heaven doing good on earth for all of us. Let us pray. 
May this heavenly mystery, O oh Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, who open your kingdom to those who are humble and to little ones, Lead us to follow trustingly in the little way of St. Teresa, so that through her intercession we may see your eternal glory revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.